Okay guys, today I'm back for another video and today is going to be my Christmas 2015 Blu-ray update. Oh well, update in general. Uh, it's not just going to be just Blu-rays, but mostly Blu-rays. Uh, but first up, I want to sincerely apologise for how poorly this video is lit. Um, normally I have a room light to work with, that being said, about a week ago there was a power cut in my area, uh, all the street lights were out, all the house lights were out in the area and one, after about 15 minutes the power came back on but after the power came back on for whatever reason my room light wasn't working so it appears to be that somehow the power cuts damaged my room light and it doesn't work anymore so I've currently got two lamps around the room and I've got the light coming through the window. Um, unfortunately though, it's very cloudy outside, it's not good weather, so not much light's getting in, but I'm doing my best, so I'm sorry. But I just didn't want to wait until the light was fixed, I just wanted to get this video um, out there as soon as possible, so yeah. But before I get into what I got for Christmas, I want to quickly show a bunch of Blu-rays that I got about a month before Christmas. Most of these I haven't seen yet, but I got uh, The Orphanage, uh, I think this is produced by Guillermo del Toro, yeah it is, so yeah, that's why I was interested. Uh, the Mask of Zorro, Let Me In, which is a remake of Let the Right One In, uh, the American remake of Let the Right One In, and I have that on Blu-ray as well, and I liked that movie, so that's why I got it. Knowing with Nicolas Cage, uh, War Games, hold on let me just put these in a pile, Zoolander which I have seen and I thought was pretty damn funny, uh, I know the second one's coming out next year so I'll be able, I had to watch it before that one came out but yeah this is pretty funny and I got Dead Poet Society which was a movie I'd heard great things about but in the end I was kind of disappointed by it, I thought it was a good movie but not quite great. Uh, I thought the performances were very good. That being said, I thought a lot of the characters were underdeveloped and kind of melodramatic, but uh, still a pretty decent film, just not quite as great as what people had said. Uh, but that's everything I got before Christmas. Now we move on to the got stuff I actually got for Christmas, starting off with a PS4 game. I got Star Wars Battlefront. Normally I get the new WWE game every Christmas but I got that a little early this year, I got it in October when it came out. But I got this one um, and I have played about an hour of it, um, just kind of messing around, I haven't actually went online yet, just kind of getting used to the controls of the game. But I will go on a, online maybe later today. Uh, but yeah, so far I mean I've enjoyed it I guess. Um, I do. The game is certainly lacking a lot and I do think it's kind of ridiculous that we're expected to pay 50 or 60 dollars or pounds or however much it costs for the season pass DLC uh, for stuff that we, for more stuff we actually care about that they didn't even bother putting in the game. It's kind of ridiculous, um, but we're essentially paying, if we get the DLC we're essentially paying for two games. It's kind of ridiculous considering how much this game is lacking. I will say the game visually looks great, the sound design is incredible. But, you know, I mean, it's a fun game, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely get the DLC, even though it's ridiculously priced. But, you know, so far I've enjoyed it. And this is probably my biggest present. Uh, I'm really happy with this. Haven't taken it out of the box yet, but it is a GoPro. Now, I, I am a big fan of, you know, uh, filmmaking and stuff like that. So, I've always wanted a GoPro, and I do think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe... Uh, now that I've got it, maybe I, you can expect some different kinds of videos on the YouTube channel. Obviously still sticking to these kind of a things, but doing something kind of different maybe. Um, so stay tuned for that I guess, but yeah, this is pretty pretty damn incredible and uh, I've always wanted one, so that's pretty awesome. But now on to the Blu-rays that I got for Christmas. Um, so let me just quickly check, I'm not too sure, I do think I have everything so that's good. Uh, I just thought I was missing two steelbooks there, which I'll show those first if I just move these out of the way. So first up here we have, first steelbook I have to show is Ted 2, 
I saw this one in cinemas and I enjoyed it. Uh, I have the first Ted uh, on Blu-ray Steelbook, so I had to get this in the, in the same format. But yeah, I enjoy, like I said, I enjoyed this film. I thought it was pretty funny. I think I actually might have liked it more than the first Ted, which I also liked. So yeah, that's it's and it's a nice enough Steelbook as well. One interesting thing is though it has DVD. If you can see that, it has DVD printed on the spine even though there's no DVD copy in it and they tried to cover it up uh, with like a little white sticker it's so I mean they, I don't know why I, I guess they've done that with all copies it's just a printing mistake but I don't know uh, but yeah that's Ted 2 and the other steelbook I got was Ant-Man the Zavi exclusive steelbook and I'm trying to avoid this glare but yeah, and it's, this is quite a nice steel book. The bullet hole is debossed and there's a little Ant-Man in it. But yeah, the movie itself, I really liked. I saw it in cinemas as well. And it was good. I really liked it. Um, not much more to be said. Not one of my favourite Marvel movies per se, but yeah, a good one. And this is a nice steel book. So it doesn't have the, the title on the spine, which sometimes annoys me, but yeah. That's that. Uh, On to the regular Amory cases, we have Public Enemies. Uh, some people like this movie, some people really don't, so I was just interested to uh, see it. I uh, haven't watched it yet, but I'm interested to see what I think of it, just because it is quite a divisive film. Uh, Robin Hood, the Disney one. This is kind of a Disney movie that I watched as a kid, but haven't seen it in well over 10 years, so it'll be interesting to watch it again. Uh, oh Brother Where Art Thou, it's a Coen Brothers movie, I have seen this movie before and I liked it, so that's why I asked for it. Uh, Jewel, this is Steven Spielberg's first movie, Steven Spielberg is my favourite director, um, so I just had to get it and I'm quite, I've heard really good things about it, so yeah. Big Fish, which is a Tim Burton movie. And I have seen this before as well, and I liked it. Um, yeah, I'd heard very good things about it, so I was slightly disappointed by it. I did think it was a good movie, but uh, not quite as good as everybody else had said. But still, you know, really good, and I do like Tim Burton's style in that movie. A Beautiful Mind, a Ron Howard movie, Russell Crowe. Heard great things, so thought I'd check it out. Basil the Great Mouse Detective, a Disney movie that, I, I, that I've never seen before, not even as a kid, I never watched this one, so that'll be interesting. Unfortunately, it didn't come with any Disney Movie Rewards points. Uh, I got a bunch of other Disney movies uh, for Christmas this year, and they also didn't come with uh, points. One of them did, but it was... Uh, I'll talk about that uh, later on, but yeah, that only... For as many Disney movies I got, um, for whatever reason the cameras went out of focus, but um, for as many Disney movies that I got this year, for whatever reason, only one of them came with points, so that was kind of disappointing, but yeah, that's Basil, the Grey Mouse Detective. Atlantis, another Disney movie, another one that I've never seen before, not even uh, when I was a kid. Um, I think this is a, one of the more recent ones, so yeah. Uh, but I'd heard, I don't know if, I don't really know how people think, of what people think about this movie. I don't know if this is uh, held in high regard, per se, but, yeah. Um, Author Christmas. Uh, this is apparently one of the better Christmas movies that come out in recent years. Uh, I've heard really good things. Most Christmas movies that come out nowadays are kind of suck, so, but apparently this one's really great, so, yeah. This is the Disney movie that came with the points, uh, the one and only, and this is a movie that all movie fans should see that I have actually never seen before, and I'm ashamed to say that, but I'm really happy that I now have Mary Poppins. So, yeah, apparently a classic, but I've never seen it, so there you go. Southpaw, this is one that I saw in cinemas and really, really liked. It is a by-the-numbers movie, but it is, I'm okay with a movie being by-the-numbers as long as it's done really well, and I thought the performances were great, and I was really invested in uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character, so, yeah, I have, 
a lot of great things to say about this and uh, I would definitely recommend that people check it out. Sleepers really only wanted this based on the cast. Uh, great cast, Kevin Bacon, Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman and Brad Pitt. So, not you can't really go wrong there. And I've heard the movie's really good too, so... Um, yeah, that's Sleepers. And next up we have Inside Out, which is possibly my favourite movie of the year so far. I just thought this was a terrific re return to form for Pixar. Just an absolutely brilliant film. And, yeah, I uh, just... Uh, so much fun to watch and just endlessly entertaining so that had to get inside out we have kingdom of heaven which is a movie i haven't seen before but this is the director's cut and everybody says that uh, the theatrical cut of kingdom of heaven isn't very good but the director's cut is ma um, does make it good but yeah uh, it's a ridley scott movie and i do like a lot of ridley scott movies obviously alien and blade runner and gladiator just to name a few but yeah, I'm not saying this is going to be as, as good as them, but I do, I am interested. And also The Martian, which came out this year. But yeah. The King of Comedy, which is highly regarded as Martin Scorsese's most underrated movie. But so many people like it, I guess it's not so underrated. But, you know, yeah. I guess in comparison to so many of his other movies, it is underrated. Run All Night, which came out earlier this year. Um, it's a Liam Neeson action movie directed by the same guy that done Unknown and Nonstop, both of which I like and both of which I have on Blu-ray, so I've heard good things about this, so I'll give it a go. Ronan. The Guest, which I've heard great things about. The Gift, which I saw in cinemas earlier this year and thought it was just fantastic. The ending really floored me and... I couldn't stop thinking about it, it just seriously affected me and it, just a terrific directorial debut for Joel Edgerton who's I've seen in movies uh, for many years now, a couple years actually just before this and now just he's randomly started uh, directing and he's so good at it, it just kind of comes out of nowhere but he also is in this movie and he's great in it and Jason Bateman uh, probably gives the best performance of his career so yeah. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, which is my favourite movie in the Mission Impossible franchise. And that's saying a lot because I really enjoyed the fourth one. Uh, I saw this twice in cinemas. Just a terrific action movie. And uh, Tom Cruise is one of my favourite actors. So, yeah, just fantastic. Oliver and Company, another Disney movie that I've never seen before, not even as a kid. So, yeah. Moulin Rouge. A movie I've heard good things about, so I'll give it a go. That being said, I'm not a big fan of Baz Luhrmann's style, so we'll see though. I'll give it a shot. Whip It, which is the directorial debut of Drew Barrymore. Uh, I don't know if she's done any other films, but I have heard great things about it. I do remember when this movie came out watching the trailers and not thinking much of it, but then it came out and it got uh, really good reviews, so... I'm willing to give it a go. Well, We're Young, which is a movie that came out, I think, earlier this year. Uh, heard good things. Has a great cast. Uh, I got this movie... Uh, I, well, I initially wanted it just after seeing Star Wars, because, you know, Adam Driver's in it, and he obviously plays Kylo Ren in the new Star Wars movie, so, yeah. Troy, which is one of the more notable epics in recent years and even then it's not that recent I think it came out in maybe 2004-ish something like that but you don't get much epics nowadays so I really think this is kind of a, a notable movie per se I've not heard that great things about it but it does have a good cast and I am looking forward to watching it it's over 3 hours long it's 3 hours and 16 minutes long as most epics are over 3 hours long but yeah Treasure Planet, another Disney movie that I've never seen before. I may have seen it in cinemas when it came out, but I really can't remember a thing about it. But it is apparently good. And yeah, I'll go check it out. Taken 3. Um, 
I I've heard pretty bad things about this. I haven't seen it. I didn't see it in cinemas. I missed it in cinemas. I was going to go watch it, but just didn't find the time. I like I said, I have heard bad things about it, but then again, I thought I I'd heard really bad things about Taken Two, and although I didn't really like Taken Two, I did didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was uh, average, I guess. So I'll give this one a go, but I had to get it just to complete the trilogy, and I do have Taken Two, so. Unfriended, which is a horror movie that came out earlier this year that apparently is pretty okay and I thought the trailers look, made it look pretty terrible so I just had to see it uh, just to give it a go and it is kind of unique, it's, can't say I can name a movie that's anything like this, a movie taking place over like Skype or wherever it's taken, I, th I don't know if it's like a fictional um like video chat website they use in this movie or if they actually just use Skype but it's a Skype like thing a movie that takes place entirely over the internet I, I can't think of any other movie that's done it before so it is unique so I'll give it a, I'm willing to give it a chance uh, and then we have the extended edition of The Hobbit The Battle of the Five Armies and I know it's kind of difficult to see because of the glare but yeah that's that I've always waited like a year after the Hobbit movies came out in cinemas just to get the extended editions on Blu-ray. Um, so this is no different. Uh, I only saw this movie once uh, when it came out in cinemas and that was obviously the theatrical cut. And I haven't watched the extended version yet but from what I... Uh, from basing my... Looking back on my thoughts of the when I saw the theatrical version in cinemas, I did like the movie. Overall, the Hobbit movies were nowhere near as good as the Lord of the Rings movies, but I did still enjoy them, and um, I had to get it because I have the other two as well, which I, I also enjoyed, so, yeah. Not great, but they were definitely, I, th I thought felt they were good movies. And the last Blu-ray I have to show here is a box set. It is the Dirty Harry collection. Haven't seen any of these movies, but apparently they are... One of the be be uh, this is one of the better like action franchises. Uh, of course, you have the first one, Dirty Harry. You have Magnum Force, The Enforcer, Sudden Impact, and The Deadpool. Uh, I've heard really good things about this. A friend of mine recommended them to me, so I was meaning to check these movies out for probably a year now. I've been I've kind of been on my radar, and I just got round to getting them now for Christmas. So. Look forward to watching all these, and yeah, that's that. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas, and I hope you all got what you wanted. My next videos, is, as in terms of upcoming videos, my first video of 2016 is going to be my Blu-ray collection video. Either after that video, or in between this video and that video, uh, I'm going to do my most anticipated movies of 2016. I'll also leave the link to my Twitter page in the description below so you can check that out and I constantly update my thoughts on the movies that I see in cinemas so you can check that out and you can see what I've been watching in cinemas and I need to I need to kind of cram in a whole bunch of other movies before the year is done uh, but yeah and the camera's doing this very out of focus thing again. I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe it might be the lighting or something like that. Which once again I apologise for. But like I said I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Be back with more videos soon. And thanks for watching. Bye.